Hey everyone. In this video, we are going to keep talking about portfolio stuff. And one of the things I wanted to talk about that's really important when making things for your portfolio is the pose. While you can always present your character in T pose or A pose or whatever neutral pose you model your character in, it sells to model a lot better if you can pose it. So for the Ember Bang characters, I've had to do some poses not only for promotional material but also for like um, uh, other in-game features because we're gonna have uh, a 3d character selection and all of that so I've had to develop some poses and there are some quick ways to do some poses one of them is to rig your model in ZBrush uh, although this works better for the high poly not so much for the low poly the other way is by using the auto rig the way that I'm going to show you in this tutorial, which is one of the easiest ways that I found recently, is using the Mixamo website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my character, which is uh, in T-Pose almost, and I'm going to show you some tips that I use uh, when uploading my character onto that website just for quick rigging and for quick posing because again, while you can post this uh, character like that in your portfolio, and certainly I've done it in the past, um, if you really, if you're someone that's just getting started, let's say you haven't had a job yet and you really want to sell your model, the best way is to have a post, to have a dynamic post, or to have a post that represents the character that you are working with. All right, here we are in the Mixamo website. And all you have to do is go to mixamo.com, make a free Adobe account. The use, the use of this program is completely free. And then just sign in and you can start using Mixamo. You can use a ton of animations if you want to make your own game or if you're just making a scene and you need a couple of like standard animation like walking. Usually these animations are very well done and they will work at least for most characters. In our case, they don't work so much for what we're doing because we have very specific uh, features on our character, but if you just have a humanoid that you need to have walking down the street, probably like some extras on a scene, uh, this is a great website to get those. So we're going to look at how to rig our characters with this website. So what you need to do is just click on upload character, and now you're gonna get into this little um, window right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my model from my folder. I'm going to drop it in here. All right, it's loading the character. And it usually takes a little bit depending on how heavy your character is. But right now, this is uh, the rigging portion. So in here, you can inspect your character, make sure everything came in as it's supposed to be because sometimes you may have a couple of objects in on top of your character that may not come through uh, this is the window where you can check that everything is looking fine so this is just to turn around your character like that this is to look at the front back and side these are mostly orthographic views and so you can see the bottom and the top of the character things like that so if you see that your character is looking great, then you can go to the next screen. So click on next. And this is pretty much the screen where we're going to tell the program where are our points for the major joints. And this is something that's really important to take into account whenever you're doing this is your character must be in the center of the universe. The pivot of your character must be in the center of the universe. So if I go back here to 3ds Max and I click on this guy and you see the coordinates for my gizmo, you can see at 0, 0, 0. He is at the center of the universe. Why is this important? Because if I open this again, you can see that we have a line that goes straight between both sides of my character. And what this is trying to do is it's trying to figure out where the joints are going to be because we're reading a biped a humanoid character and usually humanoid characters have two arms two legs and usually more often than not both arms are 
symmetrical. So this is the reason why you want to have your character in the center of the universe, just to make sure that everything will work fine. So let's get started with positioning these dots. So we're going to put the chin. What the chin is going to do is going to determine the position between your head and neck, not your, but the characters. Um, it's going to tell the program when it's rigging, where is the head going to be placed, where the head bone is going to be placed and where the neck bone is going to be placed. So select a place. So you don't want the mouth depending on the amount of chin that your character has. So let's say around here. So this is covering a little bit of the nose and this is going to guarantee that the head bone for the head is going to be where it's supposed to be same as with the neck. So now that we've selected the chin, we need to select the wrists and you only need to grab one because the other one goes uh, all around if you're using symmetry. Now we're going to go over here. And this part is tricky because you're not looking for anatomical wrists per se. And, and you this this is one like a test drive it, if you will, because the anatomical wrist will be around here. I like to put it here just to make sure that the bone and finger uh, uh, the hand and finger bones are where they're supposed to be. So as you can see, uh, if you see here in this corner right here, um, where my indicator is going to be, it's not going to be in the wrist per se, because that will be over here. I like to put them a little bit to the front, kind of like around here, so I can get the bones for the hand and the fingers a little bit more correct. Now let's go with the elbows. And there you go, it should be around here. This one, I tried to make it like spot on on the elbow because otherwise we're going to get some very bad deformations. And now I'm just going to go to the knees on this character is a bit difficult because we don't have the normal maps indicating me where the knees are going to be. So I'm just kind of like guessing over here. Uh, let's see around here. And we can kind of fix that later on. The groin, this is very important because this is going to determine where the hip bone is going to go. The hip bone is the most important bone of your whole rig because usually the hip bone is not only the center of gravity, but also where you're going to be able to, that's the bone where you grab it and you move your whole character. So this will be like the main bone in the hierarchy. So we're going to go and determine where the groin is going to go. I think maybe around here should be fine. Okay. So once you do that, and again, you saw that I have used symmetry. So that way I don't have to fix all these sides. Now there's skeleton level of detail. That's what LOD means. And you can have uh, different kinds of skeleton. If so, let's say if your character is for kind of like an RPG uh, top down, it's going to be looked at pretty far. Sometimes you don't want fingers. And if you're going to be posing your character and fingers are not important to you, you can do this two chain fingers. I sometimes do this just because um, if I'm doing certain creatures and I don't want them to have full finger mobility, that's not important to me. This will make my job a lot easier for this uh, tutorial. And for these characters, I want as much mobility as possible because I want to post them in, in whatever way I want because I, I sometimes need them in different positions depending on whether I'm, I'm doing something for a wallpaper or we're doing something for the game. So let's go here to standard skeleton. Click on next. Now this is going to take a little while. It's going to do its thing and I'll see you once it's done. Okay, the rig is done. And as you can see, he actually looks pretty good. There are a couple of things like if you can see this spike right here is deforming in a way that it shouldn't be. But everything else looks fine. There's nice motion on the torso on the arms, the head, the hair is moving as intended. And everything is looking great. So once you if you are happy with what you see here, just click next. And in this case, I already had a character here. If you already have a character uploaded, it's going to tell you this. 
and I just click next and it's going to substitute the character that I have for this one right here and this is how you get your character rig now let's uh, finish this by downloading it so when you are going to download your character there are a couple of ways to do it you can do uh, FVX, FVX for Unity, Colada, I think this is the Das Studio version file but most of you will be using these two because if you want it for a game engine uh, FVX should be fine so I usually do just FBX whether I'm doing it for Unity or Unreal. Now I usually choose uh, original pose and that has to do with the weight map. The reason why I choose this is because MixMO doesn't give you the best weight, weight map and we saw that with the spike. The spike was deforming very weird because the algorithm that this program uses for bipeds and for regular humans, your regular humans do not have spikes coming out of their shoulders or at least we hope so. Whenever you get the weight mapping feature from Mixamo, it would not be 100% accurate or it would probably not be what you want. So the reason why you want original post is so you can go back into your 3D program and correct those uh, little problems. So I'm going to choose original post and I'm gonna hit download and I'll, I'll, I'll see you back when it's done. All right, here we are back in Max and this is what you will get once you download it from the Mixamo website. So if you're in 3D Studio Max, you're going to notice that your character now has skin modifier and all the things as if you were to rig your character inside um, 3D Studio Max. One particular thing about the rigs from Mixamo is the rigs are all made with FK. There are no IK whatsoever. So just bear that in mind. Everything is forward kinematics. So don't don't count on it having IKs. And if you've rigged before, you know how important and how uh, easy your life is when you have both inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. But since this is uh, pretty much like an automated tool, it's, it won't give you both. It would just give you FK. That being said, if you're here in Max, the good thing about this is you can fix your wave mapping. Actually, I've already fixed the wave mapping on this one before. And if you are curious and to how I fixed the wave map for this specific character, you can see that there's a link in the description below on how I did that. It's going to take you to another channel called the Biritus Hub. Uh, it's a fantastic channel for everything Unreal. It's also the same team that I'm building this game with. And uh, the reason why I made that tutorial for that channel is because we're trying to do a collaboration, create a platform um, for people to just learn 3D all around. I'm gonna make a video on, on why I'm posting to that site. But just so you know that the fact that I'm posting over there doesn't mean that I'm going to stop posting here. This is my channel and this channel has different goals than Virtus Learning. So there will always be new videos for you over here. That being said, link in the description if you wanna see how I fix this guy. But if you have rigged before or if you have used any rigging before in 3D Studio Max, um, you can just have your regular tools around here, the way tool, everything is right there. One thing that I must highlight, and just because of the nature of my channel, I know a lot of people watch my channel are because they want to work in the industry. If you want to work in the industry as an animator, I suggest you learn how to rig your own models. I've already know how to rig my own models and if I would if I need to, actually if we can find an animator for the game, I will be doing the rigging and the animating. But if, you, if you're a student, if you're starting up in school and you want to be an animator, if you want to be a rigger, you have to rig it yourself because this is a profession that's uh, very sought after in the industry. There are not many riggers or animators to go around. So this will be a good way to get a job. But if you're gonna go that route, don't use Mixamo, do it yourself. Mixamo is an automated tool. And it's a great tool if you wanna get something really quickly to post, to test stuff. But like I said, for our game, for our final animations, we're going to have to rig it ourselves. We're going to have to animate it ourselves. Mixamo is not gonna be enough. So if you wanna be an animator or a technical artist, I suggest you start doing stuff yourself. Otherwise, if you're a modeler like me, 
and this is a great tool that will help you to get some poses real quickly so now that I've done that little speech you can use your model I'm actually going to freeze and if you're in 3D Studio Max the great thing about freezing uh, actually the first thing that I did was alt and X while I had the model selected so I can see through but the great thing about freezing is that you can go and grab these bones and you can still move the overall mesh as you can see over here all right so as you can see you can pretty much move and you see how smooth and how good the mix and mo weight mapping is actually with some fixes that I've done before like as you can see here if I were to move the head that spike no longer comes about with the head and everything is looking fine and dandy so from here on out you can just post your own character and it will make things a lot easier okay back to posing for portfolio when you're posing your character for other people to see you want to tell the story you want to let people know what the character is what the character does you want to tell a story with whatever pose you choose with your character because unless you have uh, an animation then people will just see your character and maybe judge it by its looks by the clothes that it's wearing and and make up their minds about what this character is going to do but if you want to give that message to people so like this is what this character is going to do um, then you choose your pose according to that so in the case of this particular character what I did is I gave him the savior pose so this is kind of like imitating the Christ pose and the reason why I did this is because this guy let me by the way control you gets rid of all your gizmos on on Marmoset um, this guy actually is the healer of our game so he's the one that's going to come to the aid of every single character that the player is going to be playing with so that's why I chose this savior pose and actually not only because it conveys that he is the healer he's the one that's going to help the other characters but also because this shows a very particular feature of this character which is these bulbs on his hands that kind of look like Iron Man stuff the these is where his powers will come from so he'll be shooting rays and shooting uh, some portion of energy or fluid we're not uh, set on that yet but the fact is that those powers are going to come from this ball so that's another reason why I chose this particular pose is because I want people to see where those powers are coming from and I also have him with his feet a little bit bent kind of like he's floating to give that kind of like mystic like he's all powerful so he's just levitating over there because that, that's one of the things that we want for our characters to make them look like they are zombified they know what they're doing and that's another reason why he is upright even though he is a zombie he's just standing upright just to let the player know that these guys are not dumb zombies all right so this has been a little video on another thing that i do for my portfolio which is post my character i hope you enjoyed the video leave a like comment subscribe and all that and i'll be seeing you in the next video